Hey friends, Ash here with Incense back with another fragrance review. Today I'm taking a look at another blue fragrance. Yeah, another one. Tiffany and Co. Tiffany in love. For men, because there's also a women's version. This is another fragrance that I've done a first impression on. I've given it a lot of wear since then, and I'm ready to do the full review. I bought this as a tester, so the only presentation part is gonna be this wonderful bottle that you see before you. I'll break down the fragrance like always, let you guys know what I think about it, the pros, the cons, and whether it's worth picking up or checking out. So, let's jump into this and check out Tiffany in Love. My wife's best friend is actually named Tiffany, so it's kind of weird every time I say Tiffany in Love because I'm just imagining my wife's friend. And if you ever watch this, Tiffany, what's up? First off, let's take a quick look at this bottle. If you want to know what the box looks like, here it is. Do you see that? It's the power of editing post-production. The bottle is actually pretty nice, in my opinion. Let me bring it up closer to you guys so you can check it out. So here's a good look at the front of the bottle. It just has the ampersand right there on the front. And this is a 90 milliliter size, not your more typical 100 milliliter size. The cap clicks into place snugly. It does have this little Tiffany & Co. along the top of the cap. Hopefully that didn't come across blurry. If it did, it says Tiffany & Co. right there. When you remove the cap, you can see that it says Tiffany & Co but the co is slashed out, and instead it says love. And on the bottom of the bottle there is where you will find your batch code, and it is etched into the glass. The atomizer on this is actually very, very good. We're talking Dior-esque, so Dior levels of atomization going on. It's easy to press down, it's easy to control the amount of the fragrance that comes out. Let me give you a quick demonstration. Wow. Now let's start talking about the fragrance itself, which is ultimately the most important part. The presentation is nice, but does that ultimately matter if the fragrance sucks? So Tiffany and Love has gotten a ton of hate on Fragrantica, just a whole bunch. People are not digging this fragrance community wise. Now we all know that the fragrance community is not necessarily what the public at large will think about a fragrance though. So you do have to take that into consideration. That this is basically a blue fragrance. I mean, you can look at the bottle and know that right away. And blue fragrances in general are not well received initially by the community. So keep that in mind. This one opens up extremely inoffensive and very, very pleasant to me. It smells really nice in the opening. There's a slightly fizzy ginger and a citrus combo that works together right off the top. Now, while it is very pleasant, very inoffensive, and very nice smelling, it is going to fall on the more generic side of things. So if you're the type of person that wants something that's very different from what's very popular in the mainstream right now, can't speak English, then this might not be for you. It's also very aromatic in the opening. It has a touch of cardamom and a prominent juniper note that comes in right at the beginning and works in with that ginger and citrus. One thing with this fragrance though, even off the top, it does not come across very strongly off my skin. Now that may be because of the atomizer, I'm not sure, but you saw when I gave it a spray that it gets a very fine mist out there. It's not super concentrated when you spray this on. So that makes it where I have to spray this sometimes two or three times on the exact same spot to get the same amount of coverage that I might get from one spray of a comparable blue fragrance from a different company with a different atomizer style. So I'm not trying to use that as an excuse necessarily, just the atomizer here, the way that it works, it's possible that it's not getting that concentrated blast on your skin and just kind of spreads it all over, which makes the fragrance come across lighter instead of being really uh, diffusive and coming right off your skin. After about 20 minutes or so, Tiffany and Love sags into the mid, where again, it smells really pleasant. It's sweet and a little bit green there in the mid. Again, it's nothing new, nothing groundbreaking, but it does smell nice. And when I say sweet, I don't mean that Tiffany and Love comes across like a bubblegum sweetness, like Invictus. It doesn't come across as youthful as a fragrance like Invictus does. And Ambroxan is not a listed note in this fragrance. It's not on the note breakdown, but there's definitely some Ambroxan in here or an Ambroxan type of note. I end up saying that with so many new designer releases, especially the blue fragrances, where there's not necessarily Amberwood or Ambroxan or anything like that listed, but it's 
definitely in there. And that's the case here too. It has that pleasant, slightly warm sweetness that you will pick up from Ambroxan in other blue fragrances. That being said, it's not super loud here. It's not overly in your face. It's just added to get a little depth to the scent. There's also a note of cypress in the mid, which comes out and becomes more prominent as that ginger and citrus starts to fade away. So it's kind of like they pass by each other as this fragrance heads through the mid. And in the dry down, Tiffany and Love is mainly a woodsy, sweet, ambroxan type of scent, which is not, again, really groundbreaking or new. There's a little bit of vetiver in the base and what comes across like a creamy sandalwood, potentially. That green cypress carries through the mid into the dry down and then ambroxan in the base just kind of wraps everything up, kind of envelops all of those other notes. Like I said though, the ambroxan is not loud, not in your face, it's more subtle and uh, it stays that way through the rest of the life of the fragrance. And speaking of subtle, that is how I would describe the performance of this fragrance too. It's not very good. Off my skin, Tiffany and Love becomes a skin scent in about an hour or so. It really is on the weak side of performance, especially when you compare it to the other blue fragrances out there, which, I mean, let's be honest here, those are the fragrances that this is competing against. This is competing against the Blue de Chanel's, the Dior Sauvages, the Versace Dillon Blues, and all the others out there, all those blue fragrances, of which every single fragrance brand has one at this point. And when I say that it's extremely subtle and turns into a skin scent after an hour, that's with me actually going pretty heavy with this fragrance. Like I talked about at the beginning, it really atomizes into a fine mist, which is great, the atomizer is easy to use. It's not one of those crappy ones where you have to jam down hard and it kind of does a jet stream. I mean, you can see it right there. It's it's awesome in terms of how it, it feels when you press the atomizer down. And like I said, I'm not sure if the atomizer here has anything to do with it. I would honestly think not really. If it's a strong fragrance, even if it gets atomized out like that onto your skin, it's still gonna last, it's still gonna project. This one just doesn't. I can do eight plus sprays and after an hour, nobody around me can really smell it unless they're right on top of me. Of course, you could try to spray it onto your clothes really heavily and go that route to get a little more longevity, maybe a little more projection. Honestly though, it's just a weak performer. It is what it is. Longevity for me was in the four and a half hour range. After that point, it was basically gone. Uh, so for me, with both longevity and projection, this one is firmly in the below average camp and the below average side of things. After that first hour or so, the fragrance comes across almost like uh, a body wash does. Like after you use a scented body wash and you get out of the shower, you have that really light scent that the body wash has given you all over. That's kind of what this fragrance smells like after an hour. It's the type of fragrance that maybe you'll catch a tiny, tiny whiff here or there as you move around throughout the day before it's completely gone but it's not gonna grab anybody's attention at that point. It doesn't project out far enough for people to smell it. And while it does smell pleasant, it's not something that's really groundbreaking. It's more just, oh, you smell nice. Season-wise, it's gonna be a spring and summer fragrance all the way. It's not gonna work very well for fall or winter, in my opinion, because it is so weak. It comes across more like a daytime fragrance than it does a nighttime fragrance, though since it is basically a blue fragrance, you could pull it off at nighttime if you wanted to. The issue that I have with wearing this as a night out fragrance or date night fragrance or something like that is that it just doesn't have the performance. Now, some date night fragrances don't have great performance, like Dolce & Gabbana The One, but that fragrance is much more attention grabbing than this one is. So if somebody gets up close to you with the one, that one is very sweet, alluring, spicy, sexy. This one is more fresh, blue, clean. I will say that this is not a clone of Blue de Chanel. This is not a clone of Dior Sauvage. It is not a clone of Dylan Blue. It does its own thing. Uh, it centers around that ginger, juniper, cypress, and broxen, and citrus in the opening. So those are the main notes that I get through the life of the fragrance, from the opening, through the mid, through the dry down. Obviously, ginger and citrus are used in lots and lots of blue fragrances out there, but after that opening, this does kind of go its own way 
with the juniper and the cypress. The big drawback here is that this one, like I said, is competing against all these other blue fragrances and it doesn't really stand up to those other blue fragrances. Why Eau de Parfum, Why Live, Sauvage, Blue de Chanel, Dylan Blue, all of those are better fragrances than this one in my opinion. And honestly, it's not that close. The weak performance here is a huge drawback, especially when you consider all those other blue fragrances I just mentioned are at worst average performers. This one is easily, easily the worst performer of that bunch. And then just in terms of being a, a really attention grabbing fragrance, I think all those other fragrances I just mentioned, better than this one too. One thing I'll tell you guys though, if you smell this from the atomizer, like if you see this in the store and just walk by and smell it that way, it smells really good. And through the opening to the mid, it's like that as well when you first spray this on. Once it dries down, about an hour in, forgettable. And that's gonna take me to the price. Cost-wise, for a 90 mil size bottle, this size right here, you're looking at about 70 bucks from discounters as of this video for the full presentation. And it hasn't made its way to all the discounters yet. So there's a possibility that it hits the big ones like FragranceNet, FragranceX, uh, Fragrance Buy, whatever, and the price drops further. But as of right now, what I can find it at, 70 bucks. If you get a tester like me, 55. At that price, I still think it's a pass. It's a little bit cheaper than fragrances like Y Eau de Parfum or Sauvage Eau de Toilette from discounters, but it's more expensive than things like Invictus Aqua or Versace Dylan Blue. And let's be real, if you're looking to buy a blue fragrance, you're buying it because you want compliments, you want versatility, you want good performance. You're not buying a blue fragrance because you want something hyper unique. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. The issue is with this fragrance, Tiffany & Love, being a blue fragrance, it's competing, again, like I've said, directly with, what, like a hundred different fragrances at this point? And of the big ones, the, the heavy hitters out there, this one is not gonna supplant any of them. So just reiterating that, I can't suggest it. If the price dropped below $40 for a 90 mil size bottle, Maybe you could check it out then, but even at that price, that lower price, you're still gonna have to deal with a very poor performing blue fragrance. And I don't think it's worth it when you consider all the other ones out there. I guess, to be fair, there are certain very specific situations where you might want that blue fragrance kind of vibe but you don't want very much performance. You want it to be more subtle and light, maybe to wear it to the office where you want something very light. You don't want to draw attention to yourself at all, but you want to have a nice, clean, fresh, uh, people-pleasing kind of scent on in case people come right up next to you. I could see it being used in situations like that and working out okay, but in day-to-day -day use, I think there are so many better fragrances out there. So those are my thoughts on Tiffany & Co. Tiffany in love. I know maybe it comes across like I'm being really harsh, but I do think that opening in mid smelled very nice, very pleasant. It's just, there's nothing else there other than that. If you smelled that, let me know in the comments below what you think about it. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.